Hey guys, it's Xboxer, and a lot of my viewers have been asking me to do this video for some time, and uh, here it is. Uh, it's an updated uh, video on how to connect my uh, inverter battery bank system uh, to my house uh, in the event of a power outage. Now, I do have a two-pole transfer switch, and I'll go over that in a few minutes. Uh, what I really wanted to cover off is the connections to the transfer switch uh, that seems to be the most asked question and here we go and just a few updates here i have uh, since uh, gotten rid of my old 10 amp schumacher charger and per finally purchased a respectable charger it's the iota uh, iota engineering dls 90 amp this is the biggest one they make for 12 volt output and i gotta say this thing has got balls like a brass monkey even though it's rated for 90 amps continuous it can easily do about 105 amps continuous although I don't think it would be able to do it for very long. The uh, output fuses are fused up for 80 amps, so um, this would be at least a very good uh, 75 amps continuous without breaking a sweat. And a lot of this you already recognize. I have the capacitor fixed on, and I have the, my EMI uh, RF filter on the output. Uh, the inverter is running, and the batteries are charged at 13.2 volts. Now the way to connect this to the transfer switch, I have to make a few adapters. Uh, so from the inverter uh, output is going to be a female NEMA uh, 15P uh, receptacle. And then to go from the transfer switch input, which is going to have uh, a male L1430 on the inlet. This is basically just a very long extension cord. It runs all the way around to the uh, corner of my house. Um, I have to make a, an adapter which goes from a NEMA 15 plug, um, rated for 15 amps specifically, um, and it goes to a female L1430. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. Um, I see a lot of guys will only hook up the hot neutral in the ground, uh, or just the hot neutral, and you're running uh, a high risk of, uh, of safety there, or lack thereof. Uh, this is the ground, this is the neutral, and then these are your X and Y hots. Now, since there's only three conductors on a NEMA 15 uh, amp plug for 120 volts, uh, you're going to need to jump the two hots together. So X and Y are going to be connected together. You have your ground and then your neutrals uh, in order to connect this over to the inverter. Now, I'm only doing that because I have no 240 volt loads that I have to back up during an outage. Um, if I had to use any uh, 240 volt uh, uh, loads, it would probably be the electric dryer, but I would only be able to run the, the generator uh, that I have a 7,000 watt, and that would only be able to run that exclusively, and that's more of a creature comfort than a necessity. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect this up, and we'll then we'll go to my transfer switch and show you how it works. So everything's all connected up, and uh, I'm only drawing about 1.5 watts. Uh, it's likely from the EMI filter here, and uh, we have 60.2 hertz uh, and 116 volts out. So over here is my transfer switch. It is a Reliance Control 2-pole. Uh, it is a pretty standard run-of-the-mill. I usually see this uh, model around in a lot of different houses um, that I've been able to uh, observe. And uh, here's my uh, breakdown of what circuits I'm backing up and I also have the watt meters. Now, part of the mess from the uh, man cave down here, but I turned on some lights to kind of describe on and show you how, uh, when I sw switch over from uh, utility power over to the inverter, uh, give you an idea of what happens. Now, one thing to make note, and I have to be very clear on this. Now, a two-pole transfer switch means that it's only going to switch the hots, uh, the hot leads from the, um, input on the L1430 and utility power. The neutral and the ground are solidly connected to what's in the main panel. And as a result, um, if you have your uh, generator, for example, with its neutral bonded to the frame, uh, during a fault condition, the uh, current can actually electrify the frame of the generator, causing a potential safety hazard. That's why when you're connecting uh, your generator with a two-pole transfer switch, you have to remove the neutral and ground bond at the generator uh, so that when you connect it, it'll stay bonded at the main panel. And if a fault current should happen, it'll go straight to your ground rod, which is connected to your main panel. The same thing applies here to the inverter. The inverter for the Tiger Claw 
1500 watt sine wave inverter does not have its neutral bonded to ground, but it is able to have its neutral bonded to ground without any adverse effects. Uh, so without further ado, they got to figure out which one of these runs the uh, lights down here. So let's turn off one. I don't think there's going to be a lot moving here. And then we're going to run to this one, I think. Oh, stop, just went off. And I think one more. Uh, this might be the one for the fans. There's the, there's the fans for the, the circuit. Okay, so I'm only uh, running a few circuits here. But, uh, so this is pretty much what I would normally want to run. And obviously if I wanted to switch over to the fridge, but that's re currently running. If you try to turn on, the well, switch the, uh, switch the fridge from utility power to a backup source when it hasn't completed its cycle yet, uh, you can short cycle it and wind up uh, popping the circuit breaker. So you don't want to do that. So let's head on over to the uh, back room here. And we should actually see a load on the inverter currently. Let's see, 470 voltage amps. Oh, no, I take that back. That's 465 watts and 539 voltage amps, 60.2 hertz. Power factor's good. And uh, the inverter is running at about 112, but I think that's about as much as I can expect. Um, and as you could tell, I'm touching the uh, bare metal frame here no problems at all um, this does not have a live neutral by the way um, so that means that I can touch the bare ground here no problem uh, this is perfectly safe and we're at 12.3 uh, volts on the batteries so just doing a couple more observations it looks like there is a little bit of a cabling loss even though i am using uh, 10 gauge for most of the uh, travel back to the transfer switch i'm getting about 110 volts out on the branch circuits here downstairs in the game room but that's not terrible uh, as long as i can actually uh, run what i need to run specifically uh, for whatever whatever i need whether it be the uh, furnace or the lights uh, entertainment center you name it and looks like the fans just kicked on. We're running at 12.3 uh, volts still. That's a very stable voltage. And uh, the fans are all running the way they should. So I'm just going to walk outside here real quick just to show you how I would normally connect this up. This uh, wiring goes all the way over to the uh, inlet box here. And I've since, uh, this is a custom made cable by the way. Uh, I've taken a 10-4 uh, wire, uh, made a three-way splitter box and uh, What's interesting is that I have uh, 15 amp circuits on each one with uh, circuit breakers located on each side. Uh, and it's on, there's two 15s on the, X, uh, on the X side and then there's two 15 amps on the Y side. So when you're using the generator, uh, you can balance the load so you don't overload the neutral. But being that the Tiger Claw is only capable of doing uh, 13 amps continuous roughly, maybe a little bit less at 120 volts. Uh, you don't really have to worry so much about overloading a 10 gauge uh, wire, um, this case being the neutral I'm referring to. So I hope this video has helped everyone. Uh, again, the connections are not terribly hard to uh, figure out. Um, you know, my setup is uh, perfect for my application and uh, the only you know recommendation is to have a transfer switch uh, that was uh, done the correct way so that you don't cause any safety issues um, again this uh, setup works great for me and if any questions I'm always available in the comments please subscribe thank you for watching